Don't miss a beat, join the notification squad by clicking that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video, and be sure to join our Discord to talk and get help with your code. What's going on everybody, welcome back to The Source Code, my name is Deshaun, and in this video we're going to be going over how you guys can get started with the Bedrock Scripting API. Pretty easy, um, a few things that you got to do for setup, and this really great developer Steve Blom has developed uh, this really awesome generator inside of Yo, which really takes care of everything and kind of handles everything for us. So I'll leave a link down below to his GitHub and where you can find all that information from and how to, you know, just to explore all that stuff. Really, really great stuff. Really helped me get started into this. Um, and once you get set up, it's, it's for the most part pretty straightforward if you have a little bit of understanding of JavaScript. Now, obviously, as everybody knows on the channel, I'm mostly Java, um, but I have been looking into JavaScript and learning JavaScript and doing a few things like an Electron and everything else and some browser stuff. Um, and now that there's this Minecraft uh, scripting API in JavaScript, um, kind of is really great because I learned Java through Spigot and so now I'm going to learn, hopefully learn JavaScript through this Minecraft scripting API. Now, keep in mind that it is still very new, so there's still not a whole lot you can do, and hopefully as time goes on, I'll be able to uh, sort of create these update videos or change log videos for new things that you can do inside of the API. Um, so right now, if you were go, if you go to the Minecraft wiki, yeah, the Minecraft Gamepedia wiki, um, you can see the entire API that's available to players and users right now. Um, like I said, it's still pretty, there's still a lot going on, but there's not as much as you would think. Um, it is new, so there's just something new that they're testing, and we're going to see how how this works. Um, I'm actually pretty excited, um, because now what this allows you to do is this allows you to make things for not only just your client, but now you can make these things for your server, um, but your cross-platform server, right? So I could log on to my Xbox or my phone or my Windows 10 computer, Mac, I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on for you guys. I guess you'll just have to deal. Um, but yeah, so it's super exciting. So enough of me rambling and let's get started. So one of the first things you're gonna need first is you, you are going to need um, Node.js. So you can, you know, just go right to your browser and Node.js, Node.js download. Uh, I'm going to be using this most recent version, which at the time is 10.14.1. Um, I don't really think there's any reason to go downward, but if you're using an older version, uh, more than likely you'll be able to access everything that we're doing. I don't entirely know. So yeah, so you're going to need uh, Node.js. You're going to need a text editor. I'm using VS Code. Uh, you can use what? Ever text editor you want. I think VS Code is great because it has a terminal built right inside of it, um, which allows you to just quickly do the things that you need to do. So let's go ahead and just open the terminal here. I have already have it open to my Bedrock uh, tutorial folder on my desktop. Now I already have been exploring with this, so I already do have these things installed, but the first thing you're gonna wanna type in in your terminal or your uh, command prompt, doesn't matter, whatever one you wanna use is uh, npm install dash g yo. And obviously mine's already installed. Or actually no, it's gonna reinstall now because I'm using a new directory. Uh, so we'll let that install. And yo, um, from what I understand, what I have researched, it's a way for you, for people to sort of make these generators, um, which kind of help speed along the process for certain things. So in this instance, Steve Blom has created a, a Minecraft generator that generates all of the um, sort of root folders and root code base, quote unquote code base, for uh, the Minecraft Bedrock scripting API. And along with that, um, he has features inside of here which allow us to copy over our files directly to our Minecraft Bedrock uh, folder and allows us to just instantly be able to use them inside of our worlds. Great, so now that that's done, the next thing you're gonna wanna type in is npm install dash g and generator dash minecraft dash add-on so we'll install this and depending what your internet speeds are this could take maybe like a minute or two they're not usually they're not very big things uh, so don't expect that you're gonna have to be waiting for 
hours or even like 30 minutes, unless you have just like kilobyte per second internet, then maybe. So now that we have these two things installed, the next thing we can do is we can start getting our project set up, which is great. So I would recommend seeding um, into the directory where you want all of this stuff to be installed. So I made a folder on my desktop called Bedrock Tutorial. You can name yours whatever you want, but just make sure you're inside the directory um, just so later on you don't get confused where all of these files are living. And so, right, so we're gonna say yo Minecraft add-on and it's going to pop up with a prompt here in a second. Can I make this bigger? Yeah, great. Great. So, so I heard you like to create a Minecraft add-on. Yep, so what's the name of your add-on going to be? Pretty much what's the name of your project. So I'm going to just name this TSC Bedrock. And what will your add-on do? So basically a description of your add-on. This is a tutorial for YouTube. Smiley face. And this is asking what namespace you'll use. If you're familiar with JavaScript namespaces, you can make it something custom or you can just leave it as the default one, which is also still custom, but just the name of your project and the lower cases. So I'm gonna keep mine as is. And now this is important. Um, so this is gonna ask you what kind of modules you want. So you can do, you can use this to just edit resource packs for uh, Minecraft Bedrock Edition, or you can do it for behaviors, which is what we're doing. The scripting is what's called behaviors. I'm gonna choose both for now. I won't be doing any resources right now, but perhaps in the future I may get to it. So we're just gonna tick both of these. And to tick both of them, you just use your arrow keys and then spacebar, and you can select them. We'll press enter. And it's gonna ask you if, if we will be adding scripts. Uh, go ahead and say yes, and this will auto-generate our script files. Now, you can use either one of these, JavaScript or TypeScript. TypeScript is the Microsoft version. Uh, I'm gonna be using JavaScript um, just because I've started learning JavaScript, so I don't wanna jump into TypeScript. Great. And so now it's running. It's going to install all of this for you. And I guess, you know, just wait. And boom, it's done. Cool. So now if we look inside of our, oops, folder here, because I have my project open, we can see here that now we have this node modules, source, gulp file, package, package dash lock, I can speak, and package JSON inside of our source is where our resources is, where our behaviors are, and then inside of here is our scripts. We have our client and we have our server. So I'm gonna close this down a little bit just cause we don't, we won't be looking in there as much. Great, so this is sort of the baseline for your scripts. Uh, pretty easy and simple stuff going on in here. Uh, nothing too really complex. But the next thing we're gonna wanna do to sort of get this all initialized is we're gonna go ahead and say npm. Okay, so one thing you have to do before you can run the npm run install is you have to go ahead and actually CD into your new folder or the project folder, which was created for you. So let's go ahead and CD into there. Oops, not install. That's gonna install a bunch of stuff in there, which we don't want. So we're gonna, okay, that's fine. Uh, okay, so npm run install mod. And now we can see here that it has now installed everything. So if we head over to our Minecraft Bedrock Edition and we go ahead and click play, we go to create a new world. Now the important thing for creating a new world is you wanna make sure that you have use experimental gameplay on or this is not gonna work properly. And so now if we go down to our behavior packs here, you can see I have an old one there, but that's okay. We have this new one here called TSC Bedrock. Um, and since we use that yo and the generator add-on, this is the default uh, serv er, server icon. This is the default behavior pack icon that is generated. And if we go into our root folder here, uh, we can see it, pack-icon. So, so that's that. Cool, so now if we choose our pack, so we go ahead and click add and continue, and we go ahead and click create. I don't think I named this world, so it's probably just gonna give us some default name. Um, nothing's gonna happen obviously right now because all we have is sort of just boilerplate boiler plate. Um, so just code to just get the project going. But we can see here that the, oops, that the project 
has launched. Now we don't really know that the that this has launched, right? Because nothing's really happened. So we haven't really explored what's going on. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do a simple, a simple, simple, sim simple thing. I say simple one more time. So let's go ahead and get this and let's go, let's close all of this down because we don't need all of this. We just want scripts. So let's get these both open. All right, so we're just gonna run a really simple thing here in our initialize, um, which is just going to check to see if a player has entered the world. So to do that, we're just gonna go ahead and say this dot listen for event. And now we need to use the Minecraft namespace here. So we're gonna go ahead and say Minecraft. And this is going to be client entered world. And if you head over to the wiki, you can see all this stuff and you can see the things that it requires and the parameters. And it's just it's just really easy. This one doesn't require anything because it's an event. Or well, it's because, because of this event. So what we have to do now is in the second part of this is we have to basically say what we wanted to do. So we wanted to run a function. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and say event data, which is just sort of the standard and you should do this. And then we're gonna go ahead and say this and we're gonna say client joined and this is going to use event data. Cool. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and say client system and we can go down to client joined equals function event data. And now we can start doing something, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're basically going to run something, right? So we're gonna go ahead and say is this dot broadcast events. Now this is basically allowing us to run an event, right? Run custom triggerable events that we can do. And there's only a few custom triggerable events right now, which is like a, some, uh, two things with particles, um, event command, and what we're gonna be using, which is display chat event. So same thing again, we're gonna go ahead and use the Minecraft namespace. And we're gonna go ahead and say display chat event. Now I use display chat event a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go up here and create a const and I'm just gonna say display chat and this is just going to equal the display chat event and then I don't have to type in this every single time I can just go ahead and say oops display chat comma and then what we want our chat to say so it's always going to have in front of it client script I believe and then server script so we're doing this on client so it's going to have client script in front of it and now you can use colors, but you have to use the alt code, the alt code for the colors. So we're gonna go ahead and say alt21. That's what the color code is. And we're gonna say, or the alt code is. I can't say those two words together. Alt code. Alt code. There we go. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and do green and we'll say loaded. Cool. And so now we could run the npm run install every single time um, but that's kind of really annoying it's not really efficient so what's really great is we can go ahead and say npm run watch so you got to make sure you install watch uh, but now we can just go ahead and say npm run watch and now you'll see whenever we make a change to our file we need to save it we save it says file change and it loads so the only thing about minecraft is you can't really do like a slash reload like you can in spigot you have to completely close your world down and then you have to reopen it so let's go ahead and rename this world just so bed rocks yeah bed rocks um right so you can't just like reload your world or reload every like all your config files you have to completely close your your world out and then rejoin back into it so kind of tricky but not all that tricky Cool. So now if we look inside of RT, we can see here that it says client script loaded. So that's all I'm going to show you guys today in this video. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I hope you did. If not, I'm going to hunt you down. 
Um, I don't know my JavaScript super, super well. So if I'm messing up the names of things or yeah, like the names of different uh, like variables or methods or whatever it is, uh, terribly sorry about that. I was really, really excited about uh, this scripting API uh, that I literally sat down tonight, learned as much as I could just so I could uh, start getting some videos out for you guys. Um, yeah, really, really excited to start going into this and kind of excited because I've been wanting to learn JavaScript for a long time. And this is a really great way for me to start learning JavaScript. So it's pretty exciting. So yeah, so if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a comment, drop a like. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We have content creators creating all sorts of fun stuff. And it's going to be a really great time. And this series is going to be really great. And I'm really excited. So I'll see you guys next time.